The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN, 906 a.m. Monday morning. We got 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. You have markets in positive territory. S&Ps right now positive by just more than five points, trading at 4709. We're talking about right near a record open overnight. Last night, to be exact, Sunday evening, you had futures rising to 4723. We've got a little uh, negative action, you could say. Over the last three hours or so, the S&Ps giving back about 10 points, a slow trickle but still in positive territory. NASDAQ 100 in positive territory as well. You have Apple right near $3 trillion. Remarkable how quickly it's gotten there. Apple right now up more than $2 from where you were yesterday. You actually reached 182.22. I believe the exact number to get to $3 trillion is 182.86, something like that. It might be off a penny or two. Uh, nonetheless, if it gets to 183, it reaches that level. You jump over to the Analyze tab. We pull up the fundamentals. Right now, you're talking about $2.98 trillion. Basically, uh, that price level. Now, remember, you got almost 16.4 billion shares outstanding. Every single dollar that Apple is adding, $16.4 billion in market cap, and it's only got to get about $21 billion. So you see there, less than a buck fifty from where we're trading at. Uh, the high 182s, we're within a dollar of that price level. And man, you take a look at Apple, no matter where you go back, just a week ago. Is that right? Yes, it is. Just a week ago, last Monday. Apple was trading at 165. You're going to open above 181 right now. Excuse me, that's just five days, let alone the run that we've had. You back things up to October 13th, folks. So exactly two months. Okay, exactly two months. Today's December 13th, October 13th. Apple was trading with a 139 handle, just like that. You had $42. What's that? That's about a 30% run. In the price of Apple, pretty remarkable when the biggest company in the world can add 30% in two months. What happened to uh, a worrisome holiday season earnings? Uh, not so much the case. Apple, pretty remarkable it's that close that quickly. And even, you back it up to December 2nd, this stock was trading at 157 So you're talking about adding 14 bucks. That's a 9% pop in the last 11 days. And really, that's a 9% pop in just eight trading days in Apple, coming into some big numbers there. All right, jumping around to commodities, currencies, Bitcoin right now, down 200 bucks, but check it out. Bitcoin, open Sunday night above 50,000, and you give it back uh, basically for the overnight session. We're coming into the lows. You're basically right back to where we closed on Friday. Crude, a little bit of negative action to kick off the week. Last night, you were up in crude to almost $73. This morning, we're trading at $71.34. Gold is flat at $17.84. Gold had, bat, had been up to $17.92 this week. Notes and bonds, a little bit of higher price and lower yield right now. And when we look at the 10-year yield, let me pull that up. As we come into a pretty important week for the Fed, we're talking about a yield right now of 1.46% on the 10-year. You see the volatility, uh, whether it was Friday's CPI data accelerating to 130.22. You back things up on a daily in the 10-year uh, the trend has been lower prices overall, lower lows, lower highs, quite the pullback, 1.46%. We're sitting in the 10-year right now. All right, let's jump around to what we have happening in the market, and uh, we'll kick it off with a big week of central banks for sure. Uh, when you get into it, and I want to jump around to where we are. Here we are. Uh, 20 central banks, not just our Federal Reserve. So we have a meeting Tuesday, Wednesday, a decision from the Federal Reserve. It could be interesting in terms of 6.8% we get for CPI data on Friday. But there are 20 central banks due to hold meetings this week, uh, including the Fed. You have the ECB and the Bank of England. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to be talking about Wednesday as the U.S. faces the hottest inflation since 1982. The ECB meeting Thursday. Uh, the decision seems more finely balanced, with economists seeing little change to the previously announced policy and path. And at the Bank of England, 
Uh, last month's dashing of expectations to hike rates is likely to be repeated as fresh concerns over the pandemic outweigh inflation fears. So a little bit of a pullback, whether it was over in England or the ECB, no rate hikes probably coming there as fears of shutdowns potentially harming the economy resurface. For our Federal Reserve, though, they're going to be dealing with a 6.8 percent print in the CPI data on Friday. They're also dealing with the first meeting they've had since Chairman Powell came out and outright said probably time to expire the term transitory. Uh, a lot of people would say finally to that accord. We'll see what they come out with. Pretty remarkable that we come into that level, though, sitting at all time highs when the whole conversation has been around inflation above expectations, causing the Fed to potentially taper faster than they had wanted to. In normal terms, that would probably freak out the market. But for some reason, folks, we're opening within 30 points, less than 1% in all-time highs in the S&Ps. You're talking about a NASDAQ just outside of about 2 to 3% of all-time highs. S &P, uh, excuse me, Dow right now, about 600. So again, you're talking about 2%, give or take, in the Dow. Now, the Russell's quite a different story. Russell, you trade up to 2460. It's been a tough go around for the last month or so for the Russell. From 2460, you're down basically 10% from that price level, trading down 250 points at 2210. You do bounce a little bit about 10 days ago. Uh, quite the pullback to end last week, though, with some accelerations. And man, you know, you're right in the middle of this consolidation yet again that Russell has been in for the better part of this year. You back it up to February of 2021, and that's when we first got into that area in terms of the Russell. All right, so 20 central banks out there, including uh, the U.S. Federal Reserve, and then you have the ECB and the Bank of England, among many others, coming out this week. That'll be really the forefront in a big way. S&Ps right in the middle of that uptrend channel. Let's extend the line to the right since we're progressing. And we're going to back this thing up on a three-year weekly because, man, until anything else happens in this S&P, folks, you know, yes, it's possible. I'm out here giving some some bare scenarios of what the Fed may do. I mean, but you're talking about still you could trade down an easy 100 points and be well within this channel still to the upside right now in the S&P. That pushed about 45.70. Now, you know, I heard my dad out there on the program yesterday, uh, excuse me, Friday, I think, maybe Thursday. Somebody was calling saying, are you looking for a pullback? Um are you a bear? You know, and he's talking about a consolidation for a year or two. Anytime you have the markets going this high, folks, you know, you start to get a little worried if you don't get at least a consolidation, right? Because if you don't at least get a consolidation, history would tell you that there's some pretty substantial pullbacks that are possible. And it's even more remarkable when you think about an index like the S&P could go from a period of 1996 to 2008 to get your money back potentially in terms of the same exact price of that level. Now, you want to pick the highs of 2000. You're talking about 12 years potentially to get your money back. 12 years. All right. So this thing has been on a one-way ship basically since 2008. We got a 13-year bull market from a price level that doesn't even make sense of 665. We're trading at 4708. The only real pullback in this chart was the COVID low uh, yes, you had some dicey action in 2008, but on this chart, all that really looks like is in consolidation almost. Uh, and from there, we've accelerated higher. So even a reasonable pullback as I started this thing, I think he pulled out like 4,300, something like that. Maybe, maybe, um, maybe he's talking about the lows of September. Maybe he's looking at a weekly. You can ask him on his program, but I remember talking about 4,300. You better believe 4,300 is possible, folks. And we just went from 2,100 to 4,700. I mean, the peak prior to COVID, you're talking about 1,300 points below where we're at right now. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming right back with the program. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today.
tfnn.com, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We'll get the S&Ps up four points as we come into the opening bell with about 12 minutes to go. You get the NASDAQ 100 up 47 points, 16,379. The Dow negative by 37 points right now. The Russell negative by four. I talked about Apple potentially hitting the $3 trillion mark. Pretty remarkable when you look at some of the companies. I was just out there Googling this morning uh, in terms of market capitalization and completion. I think the market cap, and if anybody's out there, maybe if in the den, there's a good spot. Um, the market cap of the combined S&P 500, I found a number of about $40 trillion. That was as of August of this year. So that's a good ballpark. Uh, but obviously, what have we done since August? Let's take a look real quick on the daily. You can just add the percentage-wise. August, you're trading about 4,400. We're up, what, 7% or something like that. Um, so you're talking about maybe 42 trillion, 43 trillion, the entire combined value of the S&P 500. I bring it up because yeah, the biggest companies out there are just mammoth at this point. Apple is right there near pushing near three trillion. Now these are as of Friday's close, okay? Uh, but boy, you take just Apple, Microsoft, Google, and Amazon. You're talking about what is that? Three point seven, five point seven. 6.2, 9.2, almost 10 trillion, almost 9 trillion or 10 trillion, almost a quarter of the entire market capitalization of the entire S&P 500 is now in four companies. All right, now I love on the Thinkorswim platform, they are a sponsor, folks. I know I'm biased, but I would use them anyway. Uh, the Market Watch tab, you get over to the S&P 500. Doesn't take a lot, folks, for these companies in terms of this is the entire S&P 500. You got some really great companies out here that are just tiny when you compare it to the giants out here. For instance, Walmart, okay, $391 billion company, just dwarfed by some of these big ones. Visa and MasterCard, not really that large over there. A company like Cisco at $249 billion, pretty well dwarfed over there in a big way. Now, you look at UPS, okay, Procter & Gamble, Coca-Cola, you get the point. Apple right there, a giant. Microsoft, Google, NVIDIA rising in a big way and amazon just huge numbers now you really want to talk about some big numbers pull up the nasdaq 100 yeah then you're talking about some big numbers there microsoft apple amazon google facebook and tesla i got my dad in there talking about 42.78 trillion probably the combined value of the market cap of the s p 500 42 trillion the combined market cap pretty staggering that we may have a company that opens today at three trillion 
you better keep your eye on those tech stocks, folks, for those indices, because Apple, okay, now put this in mind, okay, you get the S&P sitting at the same price level that it was sitting at five weeks ago, okay? Meanwhile, you have Apple. Where's December 3rd? You have Apple up 20% over that time. That means those other companies, folks, are pulling back, okay? You have Apple, the biggest company out there, trades from 150 to 180, 180, 139 right now this morning. You're up 20% on the dot, and you have the other indices, uh, excuse me, the other equities in that index in the S&P 500, bringing it down to where you've actually flat on the S&P 500 since November 3rd. So yes, we're sitting near all-time highs, all right? Let's just jump around and see how Microsoft, yeah, this is gonna be dicey even. Because Microsoft, well, Microsoft is barely positive, but Microsoft is positive, so they'd be adding to it as well. I'm going just from really like that December, where were we in the ES? Talking about November 5th is basically where we're at. Yeah, November 5th. Now, I imagine Facebook... Yeah, Facebook is giving back some of that. Not really, though. I mean, look at this. We got some broad decline here. Facebook, yeah, Facebook is 10 bucks lower than it was over that time. Google's pretty much the same deal, too. So there's some broad pullback in the S&P 500. If you have the tech stocks, let's check out Amazon as well. Amazon might have had a little pullback. No. No, you go back to November 5th, Amazon barely negative by about $10. Uh, so, yeah, there is some broad pullback beyond the big stocks out there, especially when you have the $3 trillion company adding 20% to the market cap over a period of the last five weeks. And you have the S&Ps just getting back to where you were flat. Now, a big portion of that was when this market was selling off, Apple was just going higher. Apple was almost a store of value. That's what it's turned into uh, with negative real yields. Apple, a company that was sucking up most of that money for safety, it seems like, and appreciating offsetting some of the losses you had broadly in the S&P 500. All right, with that in mind, we'll segue to uh, real negative yields. Bond traders stare at worst real returns since Paul Volcker era. Treasury investors are losing more money than they have in four decades once inflation is taken into account. You got to take it into account, folks, because it matters. And if markets are right, they're unlikely to come out ahead for years. Okay, so the debt has already lost about 2% outright over the past year. Uh, on top of that, CPI has surged 6.8%, putting investors in an even deeper hole. Inflation-adjusted inflation returns of treasuries, lowest level since the 80s. You see the negative action that we've come into now. And that number, to get into the details of it, yes, 10-year yields on inflation-linked bonds fell to an all-time low of minus 1.25% last month before rebounding, get this, to about a minus 1%. Taken at face value, that shows investors expect 10-year yields to trail inflation by about 1% annually over the next decade. You may not want to own bonds because they are negative-yielding securities. Uh, this is Frances Scotland, not familiar. She has a but in here. Uh, Director of Global Macro Research at Brandywine Global, $67 billion in assets. But that phenomenon may exist for a long time because of this fundamental disequilibrium between saving and and investment or spending and savings. It's quite uh, a theoretical exercise that's going to play out, folks. And as they put it, I mean, it's pretty remarkable, right? In the face of a 6.8% CPI, you still have the Fed out there buying $60 billion worth of treasuries a month. That's why I'm kind of spikes up for this Fed meeting, folks, because, yeah, they might not pull the rug out from everybody's feet, but you may see them kind of accelerate things, just like Chairman Powell did at his opportunity in between the last meeting. You might see some of the language used in an effort to convey a change in how fast they might be willing to taper and then raise rates. Uh, just keep that in mind as you play it out. But quite a staggering number when you're looking, looking at the negative numbers versus the inflation. And boy, the inflation expectations for the next year are pretty rosy. If those things come in line, things would be, I'd say, outstanding. It's almost a best case scenario in terms of we're back to CPI data of just over 2% by 2023. It is a very broad number in terms of the CPI right now, folks. That is almost a, a best case scenario. But that's the expectation across Wall Street, which should have you a little bit worried with where numbers are right now in terms of these indices never pulling back.
All right, jumping around to what else we have going on, some of the stocks making moves. How about Harley Davidson? So we'll pull up the chart first. Hog. This one's interesting. Nothing like good old SPAC to get things going. Hog, there's your acceleration from 36 and change to 42 bucks. You're up, what is that? Almost 15% right now in the pre market. After it announced that it's merging its motorcycle unit with a SPAC. They're, just, they're, they're live wire. Now, that's electric motorcycle unit, all right? That's not the hogs you're used to. Live wire is going to have an enterprise value of about $1.8 It's going to trade on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker LVW. So the electric motorcycle unit, uh, it's going to merge with live wire, a SPAC, and push it out to the public at $1.8 And the market loves that idea, getting into the SPAC action. All right, just like that, folks, market turning negative coming into the opening bell how dare that s p it'll be interesting uh coming into the fed meeting at basically all-time highs stay tuned folks we'll be right back for the market open are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and we got markets sneaking into the red for the open. NASDAQ 100 barely hang hanging on to gains, but that's only by about four points right now, probably lifted by Apple in the green, like we were kind of just talking about. And just like that, the NASDAQ goes red as well. S&P is negative by three to kick it off. Got a little bit of a sell off starting things off in the Monday morning as we come into a Fed meeting that is ultra important, folks. Pretty interesting. As I talked about in the start of the program, you're coming into 20 central bank meetings, including the ECB, Bank of England, and our Fed. Federal Reserve. Dow right now negative by 35. You get the Russell negative by five points. Jumping around to notes and bonds. You get the 10 year right now continuing to rise. 10 year up seven ticks at 130.20. And we pull up, that's going to point to a yield in the 10 year 1.45% on the dot right now in the 10 year uh, yield. Okay, jumping around to other equities with some action this morning. So we talked about Peloton on Friday. Uh, and I believe that was having to do with Thursday, had the HBO Max reboot of Sex in the City, where, spoiler alert, if you're watching, turn that off. You got three, two, one, all right. Uh, they killed off one of the main characters after he rides his 1,000th Peloton bike. Uh, it seems like they're doing their best to try and get ahead of that cir uh, uh, media circus uh, as they fire back with an ad as a parody ad he's alive i mean they're trying to do the best here for uh, a bad situation and credit to them for not just sitting there and doing nothing uh but nonetheless as one analyst put it on friday like i was saying i don't think that would have had a material impact on their sales potentially but it really alluded to just how they would let go of that messaging i mean could you imagine a company like Apple and Steve Jobs ever letting an iPod in the early days or an iPhone be used in an ad and not asking how it was going to get used? You control the messaging of the product, and the messaging of a company like Peloton has been everything. That's the only way you sell an exercise bike for $2,000 that comes with a $50 prescription, uh, subscription per month. If they don't even care that much about putting it into an HBO reboot of a very successful show, they don't even ask how it was getting used, how are they managing everything else that goes along with that company? That's what I would probably ask you to ask. Peloton, getting a lift today, up 4%. But uh, that lift is basically non-existent. If you take a look at where this chart has been, you're sitting back at levels that basically we're trading at in May of 2020. And you were at, folks, a price of $37 in 2019. 2019, you were at 37 bucks. You're at 40 right now on this equity as you give it all back during the pandemic, which is remarkable. This company has become a phenomenon during that pandemic, this pandemic, that pandemic, uh, and you give it all back. Uh, be careful of that one, because in the early days prior to COVID, I was out there saying this valuation makes very little sense as somebody that loves to ride bike, bikes, folks. $2,000 for an exercise bike with a subscription required to use it is pretty staggering. Uh, the pandemic changed all of that. But guess what? Just that quickly, unless they really change it up for the future, that reverberates right back to that price level. S&P is negative by seven. Yeah, we get the markets in the red. A little bit of fear here. Let's jump over the VIX and see how we're doing this morning. You get the volatility index, 1996, up a buck 27. We'll put it on the short-term time frame. There's an acceleration for you. We end last week at about 1869. This morning, up about 6.7 percent. It would make sense coming into a Fed meeting. Boy, I mean, who's going to be buying, pushing the S&P? And I say this almost sarcastically because they were buying overnight. They were buying last week. They've been buying for the better part of 13 years, right? They've been buying since the lows uh, that we reached late March of 2020, basically. But who's going to be buying at record highs as we come into a Fed meeting where the real potential is for them to taper faster? Right now, the market is aware that at best, they're probably going to try and increase how quickly they're tapering the asset purchases so that they can have at least the potential to raise rates faster if CPI numbers keep pushing number. That's like the best case scenario that's already out there. What if Chairman Powell is a little bit more worried than he's indicated and they might come even a little bit quicker to the meeting? Even if that's a 20% possibility of this meeting, folks, the market trading into it at all time highs doesn't seem like it's factoring that in appropriately. With that in mind, though, it might be factoring it in right now in the open as we get the S&Ps down 10 points. We get the Dow down 67 and the NASDAQ 100 just gave up 100 plus points like that from where we were at 845. 
16,391. We're at 16,273. Maybe that is going to dash the hopes of an Apple $3 trillion valuation today. It's still early. I kid. Apple up a dollar. Well, now up 85 cents. Uh, up a half a percent at 180.33, but now about $2.50 away from that $3 trillion mark. Let's check around to some of the other FANG stocks on a day when we got markets turning red. Apple is in the green. Microsoft, though, barely in the red as well by about 50 cents. You got Google shares down 18 bucks. That's about six tenths percent in the red. Amazon shares down about nine tenths percent, 34.12. Folks, we got 12 days to Christmas. 12 days to Christmas. 12 days of Christmas. There you go. Gotta love it. Uh, remarkable that we are that close to Christmas already coming into 2022. All right, jumping around to some of the other equities that have some action uh, going on to start things off. Dollar Tree a little bit lower after activist investor announced its intention to try and place the entire board, the entire board. Uh, Dollar Tree called the move unwarrantedly aggressive. Yeah, I bet. And said it offered to explore settlement. Wow. So they own 5.7 percent. Looks like they're coming in hard. DLTR. 139 now the interesting thing is you back this up dollar tree uh that board has been that activist investor has been pushing for changes for a while now that's part of the reason why you've seen this acceleration from september really 85 up to 140 the gap here is when they came out with the news that they will be raising their rate uh prices as they come out with their earnings and they basically said it's going to be a buck 25 instead of a dollar is going to be the price that they will be selling things at and that their consumers are okay with that and so yeah that activist investor seems to be uh spurring them on to good things there and a uh, little bit of a pullback maybe just serve some potentially volatile times as you try and replace an entire board but i would say that activist investor knows what's going on because it's probably past the days that you can be a dollar store folks you can only be a dollar store for so long well they used to have nickel stores right well, maybe the next store is going to be a $5 store. I mean, think about it. What's the next round number, right? You had milk, bread, and cigarettes were a quarter. That's what my dad would always say. Well, you can't have a dollar store anymore, folks, just like you can't do milk, bread, and cigarettes for a quarter. Uh, maybe the next big store is going to be a $5 store where everything's 5 bucks because 5 bucks is quickly turning into the dollar in the same way. Dollar Tree down about 1.8% today to kick things off in the trading week. Uh, yeah, Apple, well, that's part of the reason it's higher. They get another upgrade. It's like as the street marches on, you're talking about uh, 210 is the price from JP Morgan from 180, 180. And yeah, they are the top pick going into 2022. Pretty remarkable when your top pick comes into the year already valued at three trillion dollars. But they're talking about 210 and you're talking about. So what would that be? That'd be an extra 30 dollars from almost where it's trading at right now. That would be adding about $480 billion in market cap. So you'd be ending 22, 2022 at about $3.4, $3.5 trillion. Not out of the question, folks, when you think about the run that it's had recently uh, in the NASDAQ 100. Yeah, and Rivian. Rivian's trading a little bit higher as they get named Motor Trends Truck of the Year. Pretty cool. They haven't even pushed out any cars yet, and they got the Truck of the Year. Uh, Rivian up 2.3% right now. We take a look at the 15 minute, a little bit of higher action. You take a look at the daily since this thing goes public. A little bit of back to reality from the 179 price, but still quite a valuation. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back in three minutes. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. 
With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We have markets in red territory to kick things off from Monday trading as we come into a very important week with the Federal Reserve. They got an announcement due on Wednesday. We get the S&Ps right now negative by nine. NASDAQ 100 negative by 20. A little bit of a bounce, though, in both directions. We put it back to the five minute. You see the acceleration right out of the gate. You trade down to a low of 16,269. And just like that, though, we've bounced almost 50 points off those lows. S&Ps still in the red by 10. Dow off 143 right now. We were up at 36,000 last night. So much for that. You've given up about 300 points from the overnight lows in the Dow right now. And we jump over to that VIX volatility index right now above 20, 2003. All right. What else we have going on, folks? It's holiday season. And we got the TFNN holiday tiger, salt, tiger dollar sale going on. This runs through next week. I can't believe that next week is December 23rd. I keep saying it. But this runs through next week, December 23rd. Markets close December 24th for the holiday. I believe we're closed a full day on December 24th. I'll pull that up at the next break just to be sure. Uh, market gets no holiday around New Year's Eve this year, though, because New Year's Day falls on the 1st. New Year's Eve is the 31st. They must make us work the whole day December 31st. Uh, but not Christmas Eve. I believe markets close for a full day on Christmas Eve, December 24th. This sale will run for 11 days, not quite the 12 days of Christmas, folks. We got 11 days until this sale ends. If you're not familiar, Tiger Dollars, folks, can be used for any TFNN newsletter, uh, webinar, whether it's the webinars that we've done for live trading webinars with Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, my dad, Tom O'Brien, whether it's any of the webinars that we do for the educators and newsletter writers, the newsletters themselves, any of those products at TFNN, you can use Tiger Dollars for. For this sale, we've doubled the bonuses. Normally, it comes with a 10, 15, or 20% bonus, okay? There's three price levels that you can purchase. For this, we've doubled it. So instead of 10, 15, and 20, the bonus levels are now 20, 30, and a 40% bonus for the upper tier for the best value. You can spend 500, you get 600 Tiger Dollars. That's a 20% bonus. You spend 1,000, you get 1,300 Tiger Dollars for your 30% bonus. You spend 1,500, you get 2,100 Tiger Dollars for a 40% bonus. They never expire, folks. You can transfer them if you know people who are using them at TFNN or you think might be able to use them at TFNN, and they never expire, and they're good for every uh, newsletter, service, webinar that you sign up for and the cool part is with the 
new TFNA website, once you take the code that you're given assigned to those Tiger Dollars, and if you need that code, we can always send it back to you, all right? But once you take that code, when you purchase the Tiger Dollars, you'll receive the code that uh, matches up with that Tiger Dollar purchase. You apply it to your account once, folks, and it is automatically used for every forward going transaction until it reaches zero. Once it's in your account, your account realizes you got 2,100 Tiger Dollars, every transaction going forward, recurring transactions or new transactions you sign up for, it gets used automatically until that balance reaches zero. Uh, so pretty cool, you enter it once, your account has that signed up, check it out, that'll run through Thursday. For current subscribers out there, it's a great deal. Uh, buy the Tiger Dollars, apply them to your account once, all those forward transactions, whether it's monthly, yearly transactions that you're signed up for, recurring, uh, they'll get used, whether it's, or you're just thinking about signing up for products in 2022. We only do maybe two of these a year, folks. Uh, we weren't even sure we were going to do two this year. This is only the second one. Uh, we did a thousandth gold report sale, uh, about crazy because the gold report's pushing 1,025 issues already. So that was about half a year ago um, as we come into the 1,000th issue, 25, 26 weeks ago. Uh, so we do about two of them a year. Check it out on the front page of TFNN. That will run through next Thursday, Tiger Dollar Sale for the TFNN Holiday Sale, up to a 40% bonus. All right, jumping around to what else we have going on. Uh, back to the markets. S&P is right now negative by 12. We jump back to some of the stocks that we were talking about. I wanted to talk about real quick one more. We had, uh, yeah, Arena Pharmaceuticals. Not bad. So they're being acquired by Pfizer for $6.7 billion. They are obviously trading higher uh, by 93%. ARNA is their symbol. You jump over to Pfizer shares. They are higher as well. Interesting, right? Up 2.7%. So the market liking that idea when we got a little bit of a sell-off here, folks. And be careful because I would say that S&P's down 15 is pretty negligible coming into the week we have going on with the risks that are present in this market. You have a Fed chairman that does not like the term transitory anymore. You have the CPI data at 6.8%. You have the discussion going on that they could possibly ramp up the tapering of asset purchases, allowing for the faster rise of rates. Now, here's where I'm, I'm harping on this and stressing on it because I don't imagine he's going to come out and raise rates or something this meeting. Okay? But he might provide himself the language to say, if things happen quicker than we think here, we might taper and we might raise rates quicker than the market is expecting. Not sure he'll use those words exactly, but he might say the words that would allow traders to digest that type of mentality. He couldn't have been stronger in the words he said, folks, retiring the term transitory. Because transitory is a pretty vague word, which I think is why he liked it to some degree. He had a little bit of wiggle room there, and you could almost argue that the way he was using it, and he even said it means something differently to everybody, okay? But if we get back to a CPI data print, which is what economists are looking for, by 2023, you're talking about barely above 2%, maybe 2.5%, uh, that would almost be transitory, almost, okay? He was pretty harsh with coming out saying expire that term. Just keep your eye on it, folks, because if this market gets a little dicey, people might be on a risk-off environment. I wouldn't blame them just through Wednesday because the opportunity for what's your risk to the downside, what's your risk opportunity cost to the upside? We're sitting at 4,700 in the S&Ps. What are the odds that we come through the Federal Reserve meeting and we trade down 200 S&P points to 4,500? or we trade up 200 S&P points to 4,900. Do you see a catalyst allowing the market to plow higher up 4% right now from where we are in the S&Ps? Do you see a catalyst allowing the market to cascade down 4% to 4,500 from where we are, depending on what gets said on Wednesday? None of those may happen. There are both possibilities in the market, and I see a much greater possibility for things that could be said on the Fed meeting that could cause just a little bit of fear in this market to pull back versus anything that could be said that trades the market higher by that degree. You know, I, I mean, a win for the market would almost be a consolidation pushing these levels right now, coming into a Federal Reserve meeting, the first one after the Federal Reserve chairman doesn't like the word transitory and they might have to ramp up the tapering of asset purchases and potentially uh, bring forward how quickly they raise interest rates. I'm talking about a lot this program because it's really remarkable how this market has charged higher in the face of what could be an accelerated tapering faster than Chairman Powell would have liked 
if inflation weren't forcing his hand. That seems like a worst case scenario for the market, right? Uh, actually, it's not, though, because the job market is pretty good. We've been seeing the gains. We had initial jobless claims number. So worst case scenario for the market would be we're not adding the jobs and there's still inflation. We are adding the jobs and there's inflation. So it could be worse. With that, S&Ps right now down 21 points, 19 make it, Dow off 231. It's a quick sell-off. The Dow just gave back 400 points, and we are pushing the lows that we had in the Dow on Friday. Let's jump over to the watch tab. Now, we'll finish up the program with this, because we're going to jump over to the Dow first. Now, the Dow makes no sense as an index, because it's price weighted versus market cap weighted but we'll pull up some of the indices how they're moving we'll take a look at the s&p 500 s&p is negative by 17 stay tuned folks i'll be right back to finish up the show sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument you have to practice sure but you also need excellent instruction from experts at tfnn you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis and it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis the tiger first mortgage program may be the program for you the best rate on a five-year cd in the country right now according to bankrate.com is paying one percent per year or one thousand dollars per one hundred thousand dollars invested the tiger first mortgage program pays seven percent per year paid monthly on secured high value buildable properties in st petersburg florida the investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First mortgage? The Tiger First mortgage program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First mortgage program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. I have the heat map up here under the Market Watch tab on the Thinkorswim platform for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Folks, this index, I mean, if I ran like a high school finance class and asked students to create an index of stocks and they created it based off a price weighted index like this, uh, I'd have to ask them what they were thinking because it's in no way a representation of the performance of the stocks in the index. I'll give you a quick example right now. Goldman Sachs is trading down hard. You're off 1.5% today. Now, Goldman Sachs is a $385 stock. It's one of the most expensive, if not maybe the most expensive stock in terms of price-wise in the Dow. So you have Goldman Sachs trading down $6. 
553 now. Now that company, Goldman Sachs, is a $128 billion market cap versus you have a company like Coke that trades at 57 bucks. It's up 2% right now, which is just a, basically a dollar and change. And meanwhile, it's twice the size of the company. So you have Coke putting $1 of price action into the Dow, which is negated by Goldman Sachs, negated plus, 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 as in Goldman Sachs is putting negative $6 into the index. Meanwhile, Coke should be twice the market cap that Goldman Sachs is. Meanwhile, the price action has Goldman Sachs contributing six times the negative action price-wise than Coke is. Makes no sense whatsoever. There's my Dow take. Take a look at the S&P 500, though. We got red all over the place here. The only things in the green, Apple barely by about six tenths percent. You got Facebook up 2.4% today. Qualcomm is up almost 3% right now. Pfizer over there in the green, as we talked about. Adobe, up 2.1, Salesforce up 1.3%. But man, right across the board, s and is negative by 20 to kick things off right now. You jump over to the NASDAQ 100, and this thing is just run by, come on, uh, the big dogs out there. And basically, Facebook, the only one in the green. But look at the S&P. It is a broad return, folks, to negative prices. Quite a sell-off to start off the trading week. We're right back to where we were on Friday almost at this time, 46.85. Thanks so much for starting your Monday with me, folks. Stay tuned. We got a man, Basil Chapman, with the Tiger Technicians Hour up next. We got Larry at 11, Fast Market at 12, Steve Rhodes, Dave White, Tom O'Brien this afternoon. Don't forget about Tiger Dollars, folks. Only runs through next Thursday. It'll be here before you know it. Get those Tiger Dollars, lock it in. Thanks so much, folks. Have a great Monday. Stay tuned for Basil right up now.